Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with Master's Tutorial, where today I'm going to be going over a program that I made for my analysis of algorithms class. So let's take a look at our scene. Uh, first we have our main camera, which it just has a the sorting visual script that uh, I made, and we're going to go in and take a look at that, and then it just has a directional light to light up the scene. So starting the algorithm, you'll see the visualization of four of the sorting algorithms, bubble insertion, selection, and quick sort. And uh, so the selection and quick sort are going to finish uh, really quick, and then insertion and bubble sort, they're going to take a pretty long time. And oh, it looks like uh, quick sort got a pretty bad partition at the start, so it's going to take a while too. All right, so looking at these public variables, uh, we have a speed here. So the smaller, this controls the steps. So the smaller the step size is, the faster the algorithm is going to run. So you can change that and that's about as fast as it can go. And then you have uh, the bar, and this is just a cube, and it's these lines here. And then you also have these uh, texts, 3D text, and all those are these labels over here. So uh, we're not going to wait for this. This is still going to take a while. So let's go and take a look at uh, our script. All right, so in our script, uh, we have the public variables. We have the speed, the bars, and our uh, text and we do have some private variables. We have uh, an integer array of numbers, and these are going to be the random numbers that get sorted. And then we also have a game object array of bars. These are just the, the cubes that uh, do the visualization. And now going into the start, the first thing we need to do is put all of the objects in the scene since we start out with an empty scene. Uh, and we need to get a reference point to the upper left corner of the screen so that we know where we can put everything. Uh, here's the what's doing that. So we do a screen to world point and we give it a screen position of zero. So it's going to be the upper left of the screen and then put that into a unity position. And that's what this left screen edge is. Now we have something to base all of our uh, movement off of. Now we're going to create the labels, the texts, and we're just going to put them at the left screen edge, x plus uh, a 5 buffer, and then keep their y and keep their z position from the object, and then give them a 0 quaternion. Uh, now we need to make our random numbers and then also make the lists of cubes. Here we, uh, so we have the for loop going from 0 to 100, which is the same as our array size. And we're just going to go over the bubble bubble sort arrays here. Uh, first we populate the random number array with the unity engine random range from 1 to 11, which doesn't include 11, so it's 1 to 10. And then we're going to make our cube, which is just the bar. So we give it the bar, give it the left screen position plus 40 as a buffer and then the we're going to add 1.5 uh, times the number of bar it is so this is the space between each each of the bars and then just uh, y minus 2 and keep the original z value and this is going to center it correctly and then just give it zero rotation as a game object so that we can put it back into our list. And right after that we need to scale the size of this cube so that it is bigger depending on what random number it's going to be representing. Here we take our cube and we're going to transform the local scale. All right. So we're going to set the local scale, and we're going to give it the same x, but the y is going to be dependent on whatever random number was given uh, inside of this array, and then keep the z. So that's as easy as, as, as it is to uh, just show how, how much bigger it is and uh, what's being sorted. And then just put that cube back into the uh, array, and now you have your array of bars. Now all you have to do, so you have to continue that for the other 
sorting algorithms. Now you just have to start your coroutines so the all of the sorts get started. And uh, it's just your standard coroutine. So whenever, let's see, selection sort. So whenever I decided to do a yield every time it does a compare. So whenever in the method you know, selection sort, quick sort, insertion, or bubble sort. Whenever it does a compare, then I'm going to do a yield, and then I'm going to yield for however many seconds the speed is for each one of those. And these algorithms, I just got, uh, most of them I just got off of Wikipedia and then adapted the, the code, pseudocode, into C sharp. There's also a count sort that I did, but uh, that was for a different part of the same project that couldn't really be visualized just uh, based off of how count sort works. But that's still in there. And now we need to continually update the positions and sizes of our bars. So each, each update we're going to just go through our list of 0 to 100 and then do the same kind of transform that we did up here. So you take the local scale, you're going to set it, keep the bars x scale, except the y scale is going to be dependent on the new random number that's inside of that sort. And then also the coroutines were given those arrays, so they're manipulating in place the values of these arrays. That way you don't have to, you know, keep track of of a secondary array that gets created by it. It's all done in place. And that's as simple as it is. So pretty easy. I'm going to have a link to the source code if uh, you want to take it, uh, use it for anything you need to. It's a pretty cool visualization. I also made, uh, so I, I took this, did a, did a presentation over it, and put some Benny Hill theme song on it, sped it up throughout the course of the video. Got a few laughs out of it, actually, that was kind of funny. But, uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to put that up, and, uh, alright, thanks.